refinishing hardwood stairs with a new nutmeg stain color. Sanding and finishing stairs is serious business, not only because you're spending good money to get professional results, but the tools and experience behind the one doing the work is the only type of result we expect. Folks, amateur hour does not belong here if the only tool being considered is a palm sander or maybe a belt sander and a couple sandpaper grits. Stairs get beat up over the years and they need the proper techniques, tools, and qualified pros to bring them back to life. Most finishers will look for any nails that have been used in the original construction. These get taken care of with a hammer and nail set. Once all that work is done, it's time to start with a coarse 36 grit sandpaper on the edging tool. Edgers have serious power. Extra insurance is taken out here by laying it on its side and plugged in, rather than turned on by the switch. What kind of power? Proof is in the pictures, as the finisher spends a few short minutes with the 36 grit paper that takes everything down to bare wood with no older finishes showing, except the edges that get taken care of later with the hand scraper. Handling the edger requires fluid motions while making sure at the same time to sand all areas with the same consistency. Once the finisher is done with the first grit, Vacuuming takes place to keep a good clean work area and readies it for filling cracks and nail holes. This set of film clips shows which areas the edger took care of and what areas require hand scraping and hand sanding. In the next step the finisher works up some filler. In years gone by most had a concoction of fine sanding dust mixed with whatever worked best for them. Today manufacturers have water soluble fillers used for different species. Here we're using one for red oak floors. These fillers also dry very quickly and become ready in less than an hour for the next sanding sequence which calls for placing 60 grit sandpaper on the edger. The purpose of this sanding step is twofold. One, it begins to eliminate the deeper grit sanding marks created by the coarser 36 grit and number two, removal of excess filler and creates a smoother appearance and feel. Once again, fluid and consistent motions are important while covering all areas. Hitting all those areas the edger couldn't reach is next, beginning with a sharp hand scraper. This is one area where the wannabe floor finisher always fails with. Once again, it's about smooth and consistent motions where the finisher removes only what's needed, followed up with a light sanding. Moving along after another vacuum cleanup is the final step where stain is applied to the steps. Here a small random orbital is used with 100 grit paper to even out any sanding marks left with the previous steps. The purpose is to create a uniform pattern and surface where the stain is applied evenly. The vacuum will always get a workout with good floor professionals. Here the finisher once again goes over the areas thoroughly in preparation for the staining process. So, maybe you're thinking, how much time is involved so far? Two pie-shaped landings and ten steps, eight of which are mostly out of view that lead to the second level of this house, have taken up about six hours. The final work in day one involves staining the steps. Here a nutmeg stain color from Duracell is applied then wiped on all the stair step and landing areas. This is then left to dry overnight with absolutely no foot traffic allowed until the next morning. For the third and final finish coat application, lots of preparation is involved prior that includes hand screening all the areas. This procedure smooths out any roughness while creating an ideal surface for the final finish coat to bond to. More vacuuming takes place before still two more preparation steps before the final finish coat is applied. Those two steps include tacking all the areas with a damp rag, followed up with a cheesecloth that has a mild tacky substance that handles any debris or dust that may be left. In applying the final finish coat, a catalyst is added. 
According to the manufacturer, this addition gives the finish an ultimate scuff and mar resistance property. Mixed thoroughly, we're ready for the last coat of finish. As in many of the sanding and scraping steps we've seen, the application of the finish is also about fluid motion and consistency in making sure an even coat is applied. All told, this job took one and a half days with costs coming in at about $1,500.